You probably already know about the rule on significant figures during engineering calculation. It states that during multiplication and/or division involving measurements, the final answer should have the same number of significant figures as the measurement with the least significant figures. I want to show a simple example first before providing more detailed explanation. For example, if a rectangle has one side of 12.5 millimeter and another side of 6.3 millimeter, and we assume both of these two numbers are measurements obtained through some measuring tools, what is the area of this rectangle? The calculation is very simple: area equals to the product of these two sides. If we use a calculator, this is what we get. 12.5 multiplied by 6.3 equals to 78.75. But the answer here should be rounded up to two digits, 79 squared millimeter, following this calculation rule. This is because we have two measurements. 12.5 has three significant figures, and 6.3 has two significant figures, which is less. Therefore, the answer here. Should also have two significant figures. So you might have two questions. First, why do we need to follow this rule? And second, how do we determine the number of significant figures in a measurement? Through this video, hopefully, you will gain answers to both of these two questions. But before that, please note this rule only applies to measurements. It does not apply to exact quantities such as counted numbers, numbers used in definitions, or even theoretical values that you probably see in example problems in your math textbooks. We need to start the discussion with the accuracy of measurement because the number of significant figures in a measurement is an indication of the level of accuracy. The level of accuracy of measurement is limited by the measuring tool we use, and although more advanced tools can provide more accurate measurement, errors always exist. There are many causes for error, such as human factors, environmental factors, or the limitations in the tools we use. Errors, however, are not mistakes. It is important to understand that, unlike mistakes, errors are inevitable. Let's look at an example. Imagine we need to measure the diameter of this circle using this ruler. What is your reading of the measurement? Let's zoom in on this region. It seems that the diameter of this circle is a little bit more than 3.4 centimeter. We can read the measurement of 3.4 centimeter with confidence, but for the last digit, we must guess. I can guess the last digit is four, given the reading of 3.44 centimeter. Is it the same as your reading? But when someone else takes a measurement of this same circle, he could give a reading of 3.45 centimeter, and another person could even give a measurement of 3.42 centimeter. Who is right? Well, all these measurements, including yours, can be considered correct. But also, none of them is the true value. As I mentioned, because of the limitation of our tool and the inevitable human error, we must accept the understanding that we will not get the true value. And even if we use more advanced equipments, we can only get closer to the true value. And that's okay. We accept appropriate level of accuracy and choose appropriate tools based on what the application is. And by the way. This principle also applies to measuring devices with digital displays. The last digit of the measurement is always an approximation. If you look at this smaller circle, its diameter seems to be exactly 2.9 centimeter, but I still need to guess the last digit, which is a zero. Although, as I mentioned, the last digit is an approximation, we still say that the measurement is accurate up to this digit. In this case, the second digit after the decimal point. Because it provides important information on the true value. With this measurement, the true value is generally considered to be somewhere between 2.90 plus or minus half of the smallest unit on this ruler, which is 0.05 centimeter. In other words, 
when someone else who has also been educated with knowledge in engineering sees the measurement of 2.90 centimeter, he or she can perceive that the true value is somewhere between 2.85 centimeter and 2.95 centimeter. The diameter of this circle should not be represented as simply 2.9 centimeter, because another engineer would assume that you used a ruler that looks like this. And he could perceive that the true value is somewhere between 2.9 plus or minus 0.5 centimeter. In other words, between 2.4 centimeter and 3.4 centimeter. As you can see, although mathematically 2.90 equals to 2.9, the difference here is the number of significant figures. 2.9 has two significant figures versus 2.90 has three significant figures, which indicates a higher level of accuracy. So, how do we determine if a figure in a number is significant or not? Well, it is actually easier to determine the insignificant figures in a number. The rules are as follow: first. Only zeros can be insignificant figures. In other words, if a figure is not zero, if it's two or five or eight, etc., then it must be significant. But not all zeros are insignificant. Trailing zeros in a number without a decimal point are insignificant. For example, for this number, eighty-six thousand, these three zeros. Are trailing in this number that does not have a decimal point. Therefore, these three zeros are insignificant, and this number eighty-six thousand has two significant figures, eight and six. Also, leading zeros in a number with a decimal point are insignificant. For example, for this number zero point zero zero five, it has a decimal point. These three zeros are leading, therefore they are insignificant. Therefore, this number only has one significant figure, which is five. As a separate rule, if a number is given in scientific notation, then all digits in the coefficient are significant, which I will talk about a little bit more later. Let's look at some examples. For this number, thirty thousand two hundred. As you can see, it does not have a decimal point. These two zeros are trailing zeros, therefore they are insignificant. This zero is not, therefore it is significant. So this number overall has three significant figures. But if I add a decimal point to this number, it might seem that I did not change the value of this number, but I did change the level of accuracy. So now all five figures. Are all significant figures, and if I add another zero, then this number now has six significant figures. For this number here, it does have a decimal point, and these three zeros are leading, therefore they are all insignificant. This zero is not, therefore it is significant. So this number zero point zero zero eight zero nine has three significant figures. And if I add another zero to the end, now it has four significant figures. Hopefully, by now you understand more what significant figures mean. As you might notice, trailing zeros and leading zeros, those insignificant figures, are like fillers. They are there in order to indicate the magnitude of this number. Is it a big number or is it a very small number? But they do not indicate the level of accuracy in measurements. For example, when we see a large number such as this, it is difficult to perceive right away just how large it is without spending the time counting all the zeros. Therefore, for convenience, we want to rewrite very large numbers or very small numbers in this form: a times ten raised to the power of b. A is known as the coefficient, and B is the exponent. And this is known as the scientific notation if it follows these two rules: that B must be an integer; it could be positive, negative, or even zero. 
and A must be bigger or equal to 1 and smaller than 10. Therefore, our original number is expressed in scientific notation as 6.72 times 10 to the 12th power, which is 6.72 trillion. We can rewrite the scientific notation by moving the decimal point of a number to the appropriate location. For large numbers, we move the decimal point to the left. For example, here, originally it does not have a decimal point, so we need to first put one here. And then we move it to the left until we get the appropriate coefficient that is between 1 and 10. And since we moved the decimal point four times, therefore, this is 3.4277 times 10 to the positive fourth power. For smaller numbers, we move the decimal point to the right. For example, here we move the decimal point to the right, again until we get the appropriate coefficient that is between 1 and 10. And since we moved the decimal point three times, this is 7.982 times 10 to the negative third power. And if you recall, I mentioned earlier, all digits in the coefficient in a scientific notation are significant figures. Therefore, our first number here has five significant figures, and the second number has four significant figures. Sometimes a number is rewritten in engineering notation instead. Engineering notation also has the form of a times 10 to the power of b. So what is the difference between engineering notation and scientific notation? Here, the exponent b not only must be an integer, but also has to be a multiple of 3, for example, positive 6 or negative 9. As a result, the coefficient a does not have to be smaller than 10. It is normally between 1 and 1,000. Therefore, this written in engineering notation is 34.277 times 10 to the third power. And this is 7.982 times 10 to the negative third power. And this number here is 860 times 10 to the sixth power. As you can see, for the last number, there are only two significant figures, 8 and 6. Therefore, in engineering notation, not all digits in the coefficient are significant. Now you may have the question, why do we need the engineering notation since we already have scientific notation? Well, if you still recall this table on SI prefixes, you will notice that for most prefixes, they change by a factor of 1,000, which is 10 to the third power. Therefore, engineering notation can be very convenient in unit conversion. For example, if we have a measurement of 34,277 gram, because of this exponent in the engineering notation, we can easily convert that into 34.277 kilogram. Or if we have a measurement of 0.007982 meter, because of this exponent here, we can easily convert that into millimeter. And lastly, if we have a measurement of 860 million pascal, because of this exponent, we can easily convert that into megapascal.